the beach is pretty much blasted here at the resort today with seaweed like last night and today it's gotten way worse the color has changed and it's washed up now on the white sand this beach is completely different than what it's been last couple days and that's just it just happens it's that time of year you know it's in the summertime and you never know when it's gonna hit dun, dun, dun. Seaweed swayed ominously on the Cancun shore, casting shadows on our last day at Dream Sands Cancun. But fear not, traveler. A turquoise whisper of paradise shimmered on the horizon. Isla Mujeres. Prepare for a sun-drenched island chase on a rented golf cart, revealing hidden gems around every corner. Okay, that was a little dramatic. It wasn't a chase. But we'll explore a must-see spot and give you a taste of the island. Then it's a quick zip back to Dream Sands to squeeze in everything we haven't shown you yet and give you our final thoughts. So grab your sunscreen and margaritas and get ready for the grand finale. You better buckle up, Buttercup. The Isla Mujeres escape begins now. Absolutely beautiful. We are going to finally get to go to Isla Mujeres today. I think it'll be fun but then we'll come back early evening before dinner and have dinner back here at the resort. Today, we're going to the island. I don't know what time we're gonna jump on one of these ferries, but we're really gonna go on this island and, and do a couple things there. Yeah, that's what we're, that's what we're doing today. I'm excited about today. Let's get this done, let's do this. Just off the coast of Cancun, Isla Mujeres is a tiny island famous for snorkeling and diving. It's about five miles long and half a mile wide. Rough waves and rocky cliffs meet the Caribbean on the east, and on the west you can see Cancun across the calm water. Besides underwater adventures, the island has shopping, fishing, and perfect beaches for sunbathing. All right, we're walking to the ferry. See if we can get on this time. There are multiple ferry options to reach the island. We selected this particular one because it was closest to our resort. Bought the tickets yesterday online. They were $62 online round trip, but we bought them and the tickets are good for six months. We can use them whenever we wanted. They send you an email and has QR codes. It had like a little QR code. They just had to scan it, get on the ferry and off you go. We are here waiting to get on the Ultramar Ferry to go to Isla Mujeres. Cute little hangout spot, nice little beach. Out there on the pier, they'll serve you. You can get something to eat. They have these little teeny tiny chairs. I think mine was cracking a little bit. It's very piquito, piquito. But yeah, we had beers. That was cool. First beer of the day. Tasting pretty good right now. I would have had like two more beers if I would have realized that it actually didn't leave till 1.15, but it took us a while to figure that out. Ferry came. It was on time. Don't be late to that ferry or you will miss it. They are very timely. We're anticipating a uh, pretty decent welcome entourage of people trying to get you to get their golf carts going to their stores. It's all set to dreams. Yeah. James yelled at me for taking this bag over and he's like, mwah, 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 mwah. they're going to go over to come up to you and be like, I remember you from the dreams. And I kind of gave her sh about bringing the bag because I knew that people on the streets and they know that what resort you're from just from the things that you carry around. And they'll say, hey, don't I know you from the dreams? Just so you approach them. Once you approach them, then they want to sell you something. I didn't realize how bad it was going to be when I came here the last time. So I'm kind of, I already know what we're getting ready to walk into. It'll be all right. I'm excited. On the way there, it was probably about 35 to 40 minute ride. I didn't time it on the way there, so roughly 30 to 40 minutes. But on the way back, it was only about 25 minutes. I actually timed it on the way back. But I thought that was pretty cool though, because they had like a guy walking around and he had like a cooler of drinks and stuff. And then he had snacks. So we got some beers. And then there was a guy that with a guitar playing music. Everybody else but my husband saw a whale. So that was super cool. They're whale sharks. It's whale shark season, I do believe, down here in Mexico from like May to September. So if you're here during that time, there are excursions that you can book to go swim with the whale sharks. They're very docile. They don't try and eat you, but he didn't see it. I saw it and a bunch of people up there were pointing at it. That was something cool that we saw on the way there. Once we got there, when you get off the ferry, you walk through a little terminal. And the first thing that one of the guys says, hey, I remember you from the dreams. And I'm like, <laughs> shut up. I mean, I've seen you, my friend. I remember you from the dreams. That's the first thing anybody said to us when we got off. Super crowded, everyone 
wants to take your dollars. And I don't mean like they just want to take your dollars. I mean, they want you to buy something from them. You're gonna hear a lot of hooting and hollering like, come over here, I have something for you. Hey, hey, hey. You look like you want a cigar, bro. Free tequila, free tequila. Here, come in my store, I have something to show you. You're probably gonna have people offer you drugs. We didn't realize how many people were gonna try to sell us golf carts. You want a golf cart, buddy? But we walked around for a while trying to figure out where to rent a golf cart from. We were told not to rent from anybody right there. When you walk off, to always go to an office. So get past that chaos. So we walk around and uh, James got a little frustrated. So we got out of the crazy. Now we're just walking. We have absolutely no plans for today. Just killing time. We didn't have a very good game plan. Brandy was getting frustrated with me because I was starting to get a little pissy about the whole situation. And had a dad time out. Sometimes I act like a child. I'm just walking. Oh, Jesus. You think there's any golf cart rentals over no, there? No, absolutely not. But we found this company and I finally made a decision. This is where we were going to rent our golf cart from. It looked reputable. It was off to the side. It wasn't where all the hustle and bustle was. So we walked in and all the prices were posted. I always like to see posted prices. We paid cash, you can pay card. You could tell this was a reputable company. Their golf carts looked good. They had everything ready to go. All the information, they had a picture map that you could take a picture Very of. Very organized. Very organized company. They take your driver's license for collateral. So they give you your golf cart number, you go out, they put you in your golf cart, teach you how to use it real quick, and you're on your way. Hold on to your britches. I had no idea where I was going. I just knew I needed to go to the one side of the island, so I just went left. With our trusty golf cart rented for two hours, we mapped out a simple yet ambitious plan for Isla Mujeres. Conquer its length. Starting with Punta Sur at the south end and ending with the iconic Playa Norte at the north. And that was our plan. We're going to Punta Sur if we can make it there. You have to go to the end of the island, right? Let's just hope that the golf cart doesn't break down. I'm trying to focus on that nine and slowing down for all these damn speed bumps. But there are a shit ton of speed bumps. We pulled out with our golf cart onto the main road and there's like three or four people pushing this golf cart down the street. God knows how long they had to push it, how far. Hope it wasn't too far, but they were pushing their golf cart down the main drag of East Lima And James said, well, I hope that doesn't happen to us because we're going to the other side of the island. We took the golf cart down the main drag and went out towards Punta Sur. It was enjoyable going through like little areas of the island. Look at this cute little town. I feel like there's no rules. James tells me there is laws, but I, I feel like, yeah, you drive on the side of a road, but that's it. The best tacos on the island and handsome boys. Can't beat that. There are signs for all the places you're trying to go. You just have to pay attention because there's not very many of them. Because there are resorts over there, there's the secrets, there's private houses, there's verbos, there's Airbnbs, there's all kinds of stuff over there. So we found Punta Sur and missed, missed it. Had to turn around. I'm gonna turn around. We passed it? Yep. And we gotta turn back around. Once you know that you're going around the loop in a different direction. Yeah, then you know you're going too far. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm getting excited. I've seen so many pictures of this went in and there's a large parking lot. So parked our golf cart, walked up, and that's where you start to see the unbelievable beauty of Punta Sur. Probably one of the most beautiful locations that I've ever witnessed in my life. It is breathtaking. It's beautiful. Definitely something to see. It is gorgeous. There are statues everywhere. There's like little photo op areas. It's free at the front of it and there's little shops. We wanted to go out and check out the outlook over the ocean and check all the ruins and the statues. You could go down there and kind of see what it's all about. Maybe do a little bit of shopping and stuff. You could take the picture by the sign. And, you know, it's still really pretty, but I think to get the real views, though, you have to pay that little extra bit of money and go down there. And I'm telling you, it's worth it. So that is six US dollars per person. You might get a discount if you're a local. We get down there and there's statues. The statues are pretty recent. Representations of the history. There's trails that you can walk around and little QR codes that you can scan to learn more about the statues and what they mean. I love Mayan culture, it's so cool to me. That water is crystal clear. It's beautiful. Hey, what's out there? That black, do you see it? Hold on, it's come back up right there. It's a, it's swimming, whatever it is. 
So cool. Feels good up here too, because it's got a nice breeze. It's actually hot as hell out here right now. We were kind of looking at all the statues, the Mayan ritual stuff. All these statues had the boobies hanging out. I did hear a kid ask their mom, mom, why are there milks out? <laughs> and the mom was like, buddy, those are, those are, uh, this is art. Yeah, these the Mahares mean. Island of women. I saw a lot of women there today, actually. So it makes a lot of sense. Saw a couple iguanas that were super cool. At the end are some old ruins, but it's just like, I don't know what it was supposed to be. What, it used to be a lighthouse or something like that, Brandy. I'm not really sure what that was or if it was supposed to be anything. I really didn't do my research before going. There were birds flying over us, like just kind of circling around, just waiting for something to happen. Waiting to shit on my head, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> Feel like that's what's happening. The cliffs are beautiful. The water is completely clear. The water is so blue, so beautiful. I could stand out here all day and just listen to those waves crash. When we were there, there were sea turtles. Huge. Oh, there's the turtles. You can see them. Oh, how so cool is that? Wow, those are big turtles. Man. So freaking cool. They're huge. Absolutely beautiful. Oh my gosh, I've never, I've never. That is so freaking cool. It's so clear, you can see straight down. You can go down and walk on different levels of rock. But you can go down and walk around down closer to the water. The waves were up really high, so there was one level that we couldn't get to. Oh, I don't know about this. <laughs> it's wet. Oh my gosh. This is it, you can't go further, I bet. Oh. oh yeah, we're not going down there. <laughs> Chill out, dude. Nope, I'm not going into the ocean. There is a walkway down here that you can go closer to the water, but the tide's a little high. Uh, rough water's a little bit, so uh, this is about as far as I'll allow James to go. <laughs> he don't need to be shark feed today, no, so. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sure people have died out here, <laughs> without a doubt. All right, now I'm gonna crawl my ass back up these stairs because I'm afraid to fall. It just splashed up on James. Haha. <laughs> this is unreal. And then it happened. Oh, you mother I knew it was coming. One of the birds shit on Brandy. <laughs> Don't let my hair get in it. <laughs> I knew it was gonna happen. But Punta Sur is the best place apparently to watch the sun come up. The sign said you could, if you're standing here and watch the sun come up, you can say that you were the first person in Mexico to see the sun come up. At Punta Sur, you have to pay to use the restrooms. That's why when you're driving around the island, you see all the signs for pr free bathrooms. You have to pay to use them. Many of them apparently don't have seats on them, which I did experience that at the last place that we were at. Punta Sur, definitely a place to see at Ensenada Pardes. I could have spent a hell of a lot more time there. It was beautiful. This is absolutely beautiful. I wish we would have more time to walk around here. People are literally down around the cliffs, taking beautiful pictures. This is definitely something to see, guys. Come here, check this out. So simple, yet so beautiful. Now we just have to figure out how to get back up. Good idea would be to bring a hat and a hair tie. Lots of water, sunblock. We are gonna be looking a little crispy. So then we're like, man, we spend so much time doing this. We only have two hours with the golf cart and we had to get back to the ferry by five because we had some stuff that we wanted to do here at the Dreams on our last day. And it was already like 3.30. We knew it was gonna take around 20 minutes to get back to the other end of the island by then. I wanted to go to Playa Norte, which is the northernmost point of the island. That's apparently like beautiful beaches right there. And then there's a bunch of beach clubs so that you can pay. We weren't gonna have a whole lot of time to swim and enjoy the beach, but we still wanted to kind of check it out. So we drove down to the northern part of the island. I'm not gonna lie, it sounds like the tire could fall off this thing at any moment. Yeah, I was making some noises. That's ours, just in case you were wondering. 
When we got to Playa Norte, we had to start going back. It was getting a little too close for comfort for me to get our golf cart back to the rental company. And I knew that those ferries are timely. Yeah. And I did not want to miss the ferry. We didn't plan our day well enough. We hope to enjoy some beach time and perhaps do some shopping. By the way, the north side of the island is where you'll find the most popular beaches, shops, and restaurants. As you head further south, the island becomes less populated. Unfortunately, we couldn't do everything we'd hoped to do that day, but at least our golf cart didn't break down. We took the golf cart back. They were very nice when we took it back. They gave me my driver's license and said, have a good day, and off we went. We had a good experience. Good job, Randy. I recommend the, the woman to drive if you are going as a couple. The female should drive the golf cart. It was a much better experience than what we had yesterday on the jet skis. So after we dropped our golf cart off, we decided we were gonna go find a beer somewhere and just sit and wait until it was time. We had like a half an hour. We found Miramar and walked up and they were really nice and we got a beer and sat at the bar for a little bit. And then we got on the ferry. Muy caliente. She spends a day on an island. Now she thinks she knows Spanish. She's been hearing Spanish all day. I will admit I don't, but I will. I'm gonna <laughs> learn it when I get home. 501 today, they were out of there and we were moving away from the pier. No Mexican minute there, on time. Very impressive. The ferry has two levels, the bottom and the top. The top is the open aired, and the, the bottom level is an air conditioned area. So we did both on the way there. We did the upper deck and underneath, and we did the underneath one when we were sweaty hot messes. <laughs> Coming back, we sat in the air conditioning and it felt so good. On the way back, it did seem like it moved a hell of a lot faster than on the way there. It was 25 minutes back, but it was 40 minutes on the way there. I loved it. James almost got left in Isla Mujeres. I almost left him there, but it was, really everything I hoped to get out of that day. I've been really looking forward to going over there, but I could have done a couple more hours or the rest of the day. I wish I could have experienced a beach, but I'll be back there, that's for sure. This is not our last time at this island. It's got a lot to offer and we do the Cancun thing pretty often, so I'm, I'm sure we'll be back at some point. Another successful day off of the resort in Cancun. Don't be afraid to be venture out in the hotel zone. It's uh, pretty safe. The taco boys, they probably have better food. <laughs> they probably do. We came back to the resort and we were gonna go swimming, but then we decided that we were too hungry. So we went up and got around to go out for dinner. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention. Earlier that day, we got to have breakfast at the resort buffet and check out the fitness center. We didn't eat the buffet till the very last day. By the time we had it, we realized we weren't really missing out on much. It left a lot to be desired. It's very small. There was really not a whole lot of options there. And what I did have wasn't very good. It had like breakfast, lunch, and bread and a smoothie bar. That might have been good cold. They had a waffle maker. Again, not a foodie. I'm not picky on my food. I just eat to eat and move on. It was not great. Do I think that you can find something that you'll be okay with for eating for breakfast? Yes. For most people, you probably find something that you can eat, get in your stomach. We're not big breakfast people anyway. Hence the reason why we hadn't hit up the buffet yet. I got French toast, the hot cakes, and a tostada. That was pretty good. The French toast was rock hard. The hot cakes were bland. I mean, I don't even know how you make bland hot cakes. And then I got a mimosa. The best thing about my breakfast was the tostada and my mimosa. But that was our first experience with the buffet. The hours were kind of wonky. I don't think that they were open for dinner every night. But after we ate at the buffet, we went in and checked out the fitness center. I didn't get shots of everything, but I looked around. They had dumbbells, a little rack system. It looked like some free weights your basics they have some machines some treadmills and there is bottled water and towels available along with fresh water on the other side if you're interested in that that it was it looked pretty nice we went to the preferred lounge if you're a preferred member i think that's a huge perk i'm feeling kind of fancy supposed to be preferred members only, but we walked in with a lot of confidence. We walked in here all confident and nobody asked us if we were even preferred club members. They didn't ask us for a room number, anything. You might be able to sneak in here if you just walk in here with some confidence. Like, yeah, I belong here. I mean, seriously, I'm wearing a $15 shirt with birds on it, a pair of foam shoes, and they let me in here. They let me in. 
It was a perfect time to visit because you got these little window seats. It's all glass. You're looking towards the beach and the sun was getting ready to go down. So we're like, oh man, this is gonna be great. And then they had TVs in there, a lot of little seating and they bring in a drink menu and we ordered some drinks. And the drinks were so good and it came in a really nice glass with an ice cube ball. Brandy's drink was good, I tried hers. My drink was awesome. Brandy, do you feel fancy at the preferred club or? No, I don't feel fancy. I feel like I got a really cool ice cube in my cup though. <laughs> my drink is really good. All the drinks on the preferred menu looked exceptional. It is a pretty large area. They had some snacks there. The snacks changed throughout the day. Brandy got a couple little cupcake thingies. I don't know what the heck they were. I don't know, but it's really good. A little salad. Really was hoping the salad would be really good because I really wanted some greens. But it was all the middle lettuce. of the iceberg lettuce. But the flavor was good. I like the mustard and salad dressing. Yeah. The dessert was good. Oh, that's really good. I'm not a huge fan of frosting, but this is what the frosting. It's not because you're hungry, right? It might be. I'm really hungry. <laughs> we watched the sunset up there, and it was beautiful. I love her so much. The server was exceptional, which is all across this resort. Everybody's been wonderful. Not just preferred. Everybody. I think the preferred is worth it for the drinks, personally. I think the drinks are really good. So we go to dinner. We go to the Guaca Grill, Guacha Grill. Guacho? Oh no. I couldn't wait to eat here. I got a crab cake for an appetizer. It was amazing. James got the chicken wings and he really liked those as well. <laughs> they made a chicken wing look really fancy. I had to like rub them in the sauce myself, but the flavor, the actual sauce was, was delicious. All right, the chicken wing is good. Now I want like 15 more. Can we make this happen? I'm preferred, okay? I ordered the New York steak. When he brought it to me, he told me I had a ribeye. So whatever. We are such easygoing people. We don't ever complain. Just We just eat what they give us. But my steak, the sauce was so good. It, that's what made that steak was the sauce that was on top of the steak was so good. I ordered the salmon. But it was a little overcooked. It was a little dry. It's forgivable. It's easy to overcook. The food isn't as flavorful as it could be. The presentation is there. It's just flavor is lacking. The dinner at that guacho was my favorite. The Pan-Asian restaurant was my favorite until I went to the guacho grill. But everywhere else is bleh. Not bleh, but like blah. Like blase. Yeah. You like the Italian. I thought it was okay. If I was here for seven days, I would eat out at a different restaurant because now we've ate at all the restaurants. And you can go back to those restaurants and get something new because there is a lot of food on the menus. But I think I would get sick of the food here and go pay for a dinner across the street at the restaurant that says best tacos in Cancun. I thought the entertainment was typical for an all-inclusive. Karaoke night I thought was done very well. I thought the entertainment was pretty decent. I can't really say whether it was good or bad. It's just not anything that I really care about. So there's one more thing that we haven't done yet here at the Dreams Resort, and that's order from their 24 hour seven room service menu. Some all-inclusives don't offer that option, so it was nice to have that. The menus, I guess, change throughout the day. You have like a more limited menu later on at night, in the late night hours. There was plenty of things to order from on that menu. So we got room service. It was supposed to be there within the hour. I'm tired. <laughs> I know, I'm ready to call it a day too, really. So I, I hope they get here soon. I've always wondered this, like people that bring the room service orders to the room, like what kind of weird stuff do they see? I'm sure there's people that are like completely naked. <laughs> they walk into the rooms. I'm sure there's like some crazy stories that those guys can tell you, but I'll never know. It's on its way. Brandy said her food's on its way. Room service arrived in 50 minutes. We got a few different items. Got Caesar salad, some kind of club sandwiches, and uh, pizza. James was just saying that these guys probably have seen some stuff in these hotel rooms when they're delivering late night delivery. <laughs> I'm laying in bed and he comes in and he doesn't look at the bed a single time. Dude's yeah. seen some <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally not even hungry right now. It looks like the best pizza I've ever seen in my life. She said they're launchable pepperonis. The pizza was disgusting. This is the worst pizza I've ever had in my life. The pizza was the most disgusting pizza. I love pizza, even bad pizza. I'm still gonna eat it. 
Ew. I usually eat crust. Not today. <laughs> Not today. These pepperonis are disgusting. Are they pepperoni? Oh. The Caesar salad. Okay, I like the dressing. The dressing was good, but the lettuce kind of tasted like it hadn't been cleaned. The lettuce tastes like pesticides. Club sandwich. I enjoyed it. A romantic dinner in bed. Cheers. The club sandwich was edible. The whole vacation, I feel like I've been complaining about food, and I don't complain about food ever in my life. But yeah, came in 50 minutes. <laughs> Made it. Good time. These rafts are finding a new home here in Mexico. And like that, our last day of vacation was over. So here are some of our final thoughts on Dream Sands Cancun. I always take reviews with a grain of salt because typically people only do reviews if they're unhappy or something's wrong. They don't go on and say how good things are. Unlike the wild party scene of some resorts, Dream Sands charmed us with its intimate, relaxed vibe. Perfectly nestled at the top of the hotel zone, it offered easy access to local shops and the Isla Mujeres Ferry. Yet the beachfront felt secluded and serene. The resort's beautiful beach with calm waters was nice and the staff's dedication to service exceeded our expectations. We found that upgrading to the preferred club was worth it for the extra bars, pool, and private beach service. But we realized that those few things alone might not be worth the extra money for some. Dream Sands Cancun was a charming resort, but it did have some setbacks. The food was edible, but nothing to write home about. No real standouts, and the buffet seemed to play hide and seek with its dinner hours. Our upgraded room felt fancy on paper with all those extras, but in reality it was mediocre at best. And don't even get me started on staff constantly pushing upgrades. For kids, the resort was kinda... Eh. Sure, they had pools, activities, and a kids club, but no water park or anything too exciting. Compared to other Cancun resorts meant for families, Dream Sands felt a bit tame. If your little ones are thrill seekers, this might not be their jam. But hey, if all you want to do is bake on a gorgeous beach, this place nails it. Ultimately, choosing a Cancun resort depends on what you or you and your family are into. Dream Sands might not be the perfect fit for everyone, but hey, you do you. I'm pretty sure that these birds that took a shit on Brandy are the exact same birds that are on my shirt today. You recognize these birds? Don't let my hair get in it. If you like all inclusives, family vacations, and cruising, make sure you're subscribed to the channel.